Hi everyone, how are you? It's Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape and today is Monday, August 8th. So thrilled that you're here to join me tonight. Um, you may see a few guest appearances with my cat Angel. She's decided that my workstation is where she wants to sit tonight. She hasn't done that in a while, but that's all right. We're gonna let her do it. She's old and she gets to do what she wants. Um, I'm so glad that you could all join me tonight. Thank you so much. I'm excited tonight to share with you. Hi, Ann. Thanks for watching um, a really pretty Christmas card. Um, it's got a... Whoa, she's now rubbing against my camera stand, so I apologize for that shaking. Um, I am very excited to share with you a Christmas card, actually, out of the new J July to December mini catalog. Hi, Cheryl. Um, and we'll see how that goes if Angel continues to sit on my desk here, getting in the way. Um... I thought I was actually going to lose her a couple of weeks ago, so I'm kind of cutting her some slack on what she can get away with lately. Um, anyhow, thank you so much for joining. I hope you all had a really good week. Um, I can't say that ours was a particularly exciting week. We did finally get some rain over the weekend, just about an inch, which was much needed, although we're still close to six inches, I think, under where we should be at this point this year. So things are still pretty dry here, but... I'll take that over what some other parts of the country are experiencing right now, that's for sure. Um, just basically got some things done around the house. We did pick up some ceiling paint finally so we can finish painting our bedroom ceiling and um, hopefully get things put away, including my mirror that's behind me that you can't see right now that sits on my dresser. Um, it'll be nice to kind of have that, that project taken care of. So. Hello, Lynn. Thanks for joining us all the way from New Jersey. I appreciate it. Um, again, if you're just joining me, you may see the head of my cat, Angel, showing up in the images here. She's helping me on my desk right now. I may have to shift her around just a little bit, but right now this is where she wants to be, and she can be kind of stubborn sometimes. Um, you know, other than that, I don't really have a whole lot to say. I was lucky and got to talk to a couple of friends this weekend I haven't talked to in quite a while so um, let me tell you if you have one of those friends reach out to them and give them a call because it really does brighten up your day um, just talking with a friend unexpectedly so anyhow why don't we go ahead and get started I am going to flip my camera around again I apologize for any jiggling that happens in that process but bear with me here just a moment You can kind of see my messy desk there. And definitely a lot more of the cat sitting on my workstation. She likes warmth, and so I'm having a feeling she may try to sit underneath my um, work lamp, which will be putting off a lot of heat for her. So I'm going to quick flip on my other camera to make sure that I am where I'm supposed to be on my live here and it looks like I am so and here she comes right in front of the camera Angel I think you're gonna have to hop down what do you think okay we'll see she may not stay down but oh well, now I got cat hair on everything too that ought to look good with my tape when I'm using my tape runners tonight all right that's my world so anyhow, thank you so much for joining me. The card that I'm going to make tonight features a couple of stamp sets that are actually on the cover of the July to December uh, mini catalog that came out. And in particular, we're focusing on these Christmas trees. It's a very, very cool set of products. And it is actually found on pages 30 and 31 and 32 in the catalog. So here's just some examples of some cards that have been made using different stamps and dies that you can get in this suite of products. And then this page, which is page 31, really features all of the, the products that are included in this suite. This is just a huge suite, but you guys, the cards you can make with this are just stunning. So it includes um, a couple of bundles. The first one is a bundled that... Uh, includes Christmas light stamp set and then also the twinkling lights dies which coordinates as you can see with this stamp set um, you've got trees not only does it do the 
fancy cut, but also the outline cut. Same thing with the snowflake. And then you've got this, which will work with this stamped image. And um, there's just other snowflakes in there. So there are some other die cuts that will coordinate with that. This little tree goes here. Lots of pretty snowflakes that you can make with this. But the actual suite of product contains a second set of stamps and dies and this is a sent sentiment sentiment greeting called brightest glow and it's it's got really nice greetings um, what i like about it is that it includes a season's greetings a happy holidays and a merry christmas so i think we cover a lot of different ways that people may greet um, people just depending on their their religious beliefs or how they celebrate the holidays just in general and then some nice greetings to put on the inside too so this we are using for the greetings. And then this one comes with this die set, which also creates some really beautiful um, dies. A lot of what they do is poke holes into the paper, which allows you to get some of the background pulled through. So just, I'm not gonna show you the front side yet, but on the back side, you can see all those cool holes that were die cut. And that is just using this circle, circular die. Um, you might have to do a little bit of punching out of all the little circles that come out, but really, really cool effect with those dies. In addition to that, it comes with this gorgeous ribbon, which is a vanilla ribbon with gold and then kind of the see-through running through the center of it. Um, that's absolutely beautiful, and it's just called Golden Vanilla 3 8 Inch Satin Edge Ribbon. Very pretty, makes bows very nicely. And then it includes um, the six by six designer series paper, which comes with all of these different patterns, some of which the dies will work very nicely on. And then the back side, which um, the side I just showed you has gold foil in it. So you'll see a bit of reflection in that. And then when you flip it over, there's no foil on here. Um, it's just regular designer series paper. So you get a lot of that. And the colors of this paper include, um, this one's called Lights of Glow, and it includes the Cherry Cobbler Evening Evergreen Soft Succulent, Very Vanilla, Basic Black, and Gold. And then it also includes some fun sparkly paper. And... We've got the gold, which I've used on one of my cards tonight. And then it also includes, I'm just looking for it on my shelves right now. And I don't know where I put it. Ah, here it is. Phew. Um, kind of the soft succulent type green color. The gold. And also just... Uh, I think this could be white or very vanilla, depending on how you make your card. So just real nice. And of course, this is the newer style of the glitter paper, so you don't end up wearing glitter for the next three weeks because you've used this paper. And then in addition to that, um, it also comes with another set of specialty paper. And that looks like this and again this has red foil on it and this is just one-sided so you're, you're only going to get the one side to work with there is a um, gold toned paper and they actually call this gold that's more cherry cobbler the red that I showed you and then we've got the soft succulent and again each of them have a little bit of shimmer in them and then last but not least, you've got these lovely um, metallic um, pearls. They call them festive for pearls. You've seen me use these on several cards in the last few weeks. Um, so that kind of rounds out that paper. But just it's just a beautiful, beautiful set. So if you're looking for a good Christmas set, this is one that I would recommend for you. And again, here's a closer up image of the stamps in the Christmas lights bundle and then the stamps and sentiments in the brightest glow bundle. 
So that's what we've got, and that's what we're working with tonight. So the card that we're making is actually a pop-up card, and um, I'm calling it more of an inside pop-up card because that's where you're going to see it. So on the front, I've just used the Merry Christmas sentiment with one of the dies from the labels die set, and it's just this one here. I love how it's got the stitches and then a little bit of poke out. Um areas and then I've used some of the gold ribbon just because I was focusing on the gold in the designer paper that I used but when you open this card up how fun is that it's got these Christmas trees on the inside with a little bit more of the designer series paper so you can see if you look at it um, kind of straight down this is what that card is gonna look like and if you were to open it up all the way you can see that I've actually got three Christmas trees here and it does stand up on its own with the greeting on the inside. So it's an inside pop-up card. That's what we're going to call it. So I'm going to show you how to make this card. It is another one of those looks really cool, but very easy card to make, which, um, as you know, I, I really like those types of cards because I think they make us look fabulous as we're making our cards. Um, there is a little bit of assembly required on this card, so I have done all of my die cutting ahead of time. But I am going to share with you some tricks that I learned while I was working on this card um, that will save you perhaps some time. I'm adjusting my camera a little bit. Will save you just a little bit of time and or some of your designer series paper as well. So let me um, proceed with measurements and then we'll get started on actually assembling the card. I am using, um, in this card, I use Cherry Cobbler as my primary color with a little bit of the um, Evening Evergreen to accent it. Tonight, the card that I'm making is all going to be using the Evening Evergreen, and it's going to be more of a monotone colored card. So to start with, you need a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock scored at five and a half, and then you need a piece of cardstock that measures three and a half by four and an eighth. The original pattern that I saw called for this to be four and a quarter, but I found if I trimmed it down to four and an eighth, it just fit right inside the card. And that way I didn't have to worry about these edges hanging over on either side of my card. So that's where the four and an eighth is coming from on this. And then you score it at three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three inches. And then you're left with this half inch piece and you're going to actually um, put some tear and tape here because eventually you will be folding this up to make the square, which is what our trees are attached to right here. All right, I guess that would be a rectangle more than a square, wouldn't it? Then the next thing that you need is a piece of four and an eighth by five and three eighths cardstock. I chose to use gold foil. Now I am pretty stingy with my gold foil and don't like to often use it as a layer on my card so this gold foil is actually going to be this what is the soft succulent layer on this card and so what I did was I took my piece of gold foil and I needed a full-size Christmas tree for this card so I just cut it out of the center of this it's not going to show because we're going to be covering this up with designer paper and that way I don't feel bad about using gold foil as a layer and I'm getting a two for one out of it being able to cut out my tree. So keep that in mind. You could do this with cardstock with anything else, but like I said, when I'm using my foils and glitter paper, I like to um, be kind of conservative with them and um, maximize what I can get out of them, kind of maximize my value. All right, next thing that you need is a piece of four by five and a quarter designer series paper of your choice. I am using the gold foiled Christmas trees from the designer series paper. And then you also need a piece of designer series paper that measures four by four and a half. That'll go on the inside of our card. And then you need either a piece of basic white or very vanilla, depending on what color your card is, to um, be on the base inside layer and that also will measure four by four and a half and then you're going to want some scraps of whatever color you're working with because you will need to die cut 
several of the Christmas trees. Now, if you notice in here, I've got three trees that I've die cut out. One, two, three. There's three different sizes. But if you looked at the dies, there's only one set of Christmas tree dies. So to get these smaller sizes, basically what I did was um, the first one I cut out the full tree. And then the second one, I just adjusted where my paper ended so that I was only getting a part of the tree. And then on the last tree I made, it was even shorter. So again, I'm getting less of a tree. I didn't worry so much about what these base, line, base trees look like here because I'm gonna be trimming them off so that they're rounded similar to what you see here. And what I did when I was die cutting is I stamped first, lined up my tree kind of in the center, and then I put this around it. And once I had the pieces lined up how I wanted them, I just took a piece of washi tape and um, held the, see now I can't find the edge here. I just took a piece of washi tape and what I did was put it over the two dies like this and that way they were held together and then each time I had to line the tree up I didn't have to worry about these two shifting you could even put another piece down at the bottom here um, if you wanted it to be really secure but that way I knew this was going to be lined up consistently each time and then the washi tape peels right off and it does not um, stick to the cardstock either so that's a quick tip on how I did those and then these all come with holes that are punched out. Um, let me see if I can get a piece of white paper here. So you can see all of these little pieces punch out, allowing whatever background paper you use to show through on the tree. And that's true for all three of the trees that we've got going here. And I chose, again, to use my gold foil, as you already know. So I've got my big tree my medium tree and now I panic because I can't find my little tree and I've got my little tree and you can tell on my foil here I picked up the edge of a plate or the die or something and so I've got that crease there but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be layering these pieces together so you don't have to worry about that because that kind of thing is not going to show through so let me show you real quick how we made these trees and I did use the Tombow liquid glue for this. So I'm gonna pull out my mat. And basically I just started putting this glue wherever I didn't have holes that were um, die cut through. And for some of these dies with these little holes, you may find that you need to shim you know, just add another piece of cardstock on top of your plates to create a little bit of shim um, to add a little more pressure when you're, you're die cutting them and that pretty much punches the holes out. So I started then by just lining up the star at the top and then gently laying my card down. With the Tombow glue, I, I'm able to shift it a little bit. It's really slippery on this foil. Um, on this card, I used the glimmer paper behind the trees so you can see some sparkle and I was curious what the foil would look like um, instead of the glimmer paper so that is why I chose to go this way and so then again I'm gonna do that same thing on the other three pieces you know, this is one of those moments where usually I watch somebody else's video and I see that they've done this clever thing to create the different size trees. This is one of those things I actually thought of on my own this time through, and that's always kind of fun to, hey, this worked for me, because, you know, sometimes we don't think of these things until we see somebody else doing it. Okay, so there's my middle size tree, and then I'm going to take... The little tree and again I'm going to add adhesive with my liquid glue here and I'm choosing the liquid glue both because it's being attached to foil 
and oftentimes this works better than the adhesive tape um, but also because I wanted to be able to shift it to make sure I had it lined up nicely on the gold you don't want to put a ton on because whoops there it's oozing right through the star because you don't want it to ooze through but we are good and I can set that aside and then all I did to make the trees curved is I literally just took my paper snips and trimmed around it and added a little extra curve where I've got the pointy corners. And if it's not quite as round as you want, you can always go back and make it a little rounder. Um, I personally would discourage that because you end up just starting to cut and cut and cut and oftentimes you'll end up cutting off maybe more than you wanted to. So try to be happy with what you've got the first time. And then I did the same thing on this little layer and that to me is not very even so I am going to round it out. And you know what? It's a Christmas tree and they aren't perfect in the fields even when you bring them in and cut off branches. So don't try to make your paper ones perfect either. Okay, so now I've got my Christmas trees all done and we're gonna start assembling the card. So the first thing that you're gonna do is fold this piece along all of the score lines. You do wanna make sure you've got really good creases because this is what is um, the mechanism that's gonna make the inside pieces pop on your trees. Hi Sandy, hi Pam, thanks for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. And then I just put a piece of tear and tape here in this short end, this is a half inch measurement. And to get things lined up, I always just fold over part of it. I keep it flat and then I fold that last flap over. And I don't really have to worry about lining anything up. And so now I've got my rectangle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to tear and tape then on two sections. And I try to get my seam where I join the pieces together to be on the inside seam of my card. And so I'm gonna put my tear and tape on those two pieces of the card. And I almost buried it on my desk. I'm a little nervous because tonight I was actually ready ahead of time. And that usually means that there's something I forgot that I thought I had done. So we'll see what that ends up being. Okay, and I always like to just take my bone folder and rub it over my tear and tape. Um, for me, I think it's easier to peel off the backing. That's the only reason that I do it. And I am gonna just run over that a little bit. Okay, so that's the, the mechanism is all set up. And now we're just gonna start putting the pieces in our card. So the first thing that we're gonna do is fold our card sock along the score line. and burnish that edge in. And then I just wanna make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Okay, we're gonna peel off the um, tear and tape from one side of this. Okay, don't do both of them. And I am going to take and actually line up. I want this other piece going towards the top of my card and I'm gonna line up my box so it is just below the score line because you want the card to be able to fold right so it's gonna go my score line is right here and I've got it held down on one side and then when the card folds it's gonna go like that okay so now that I have the base of it in place and you can you know kind of stick your finger in and and rub it if you want to put a pencil just so you're sure it's secured or just flip it over and do that, it's a lot easier. And then to simplify this step, we're simply gonna pull the tape off, the backing off, I mean, and I'm gonna fold my card closed. And then it'll be attached to the top side. So now you can see that mechanism 
is right there and it folds flat when the card is folded and pops open and that's how I can get things to stand up in the inside of the card and, and be a pop out. So we will go ahead and decorate the front of the card. I probably should have done that first, but it's gonna work. And again, I'm gonna use some of my liquid glue because I've got that foil here and I just wanna make sure I can get that top layer to adhere correctly. And so I'm just gonna run, come on, I just used you. Oh, there we go. Now I got a big blurp. All right, so I'm gonna run my glue through. Um, I get close to the corners, but not right in them because I don't want it oozing out the side. Okay, and this is a little heavier. You don't need to go that heavy, but that's just because my glue blurped right there. So I'm gonna take my piece of designer series paper and put it on top of my gold foil, just centering it like that. And I'm gonna flip it over. Um, that way if I have any glue on my fingertips at all, I don't have to worry about getting it on the cardstock. And now I've got that um, whole thing covered and nobody's gonna know that I die cut that tree out. So keep that in mind when you're working on cards. It's a great way to save paper. All right, and then I'm going to take my, I'm going to try to take my seal and I'm just gonna put adhesive on the back side of the gold, the gold foil. I know you hear me say this every time, light touch. And I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of the tree. Light touch and a quick check and that lifts it off. Okay, and then I'm just gonna center this piece on the front of my card. And it's gonna be just a thin layer of the green that will show through. And again, I'm gonna just come in on the inside and rub right there. So now that covers the front of the card. And then on the inside of our card, we are going to take the smaller piece of designer paper that we cut and again, I'm just gonna add adhesive. And I'm gonna line this up. Um, I actually found it easier to do upside down. So if you do go with the upside down trick, make sure that your pattern is going the right direction. Thankfully this time I don't have a, a real direction to my pattern. And so I'm just gonna center this with equal borders on all the sides, including down at the base where it joins up with my pop-up mechanism. So this, oh dear. All right, we're just gonna change the layout of this card just a teeny bit, cause I put it on the wrong side. But I don't think that's gonna be a big problem. Is it? No, it won't be today. So then I took my very vanilla card stock which really, it could have been white because of this piece of paper, but I am going still with very vanilla because I, yep, we're going with very vanilla. Um, initially, this was supposed to be down here, and I could still do that. You know what, I'm still gonna do that because I want my trees against this other backdrop. So. I'm just gonna do a little work around. We'll make it work. Um, let me grab another piece of that. Okay. And so, as I said, that particular piece was four by four and a half. So in addition to making sure your designer period series paper is facing the right direction, also make sure that you have it on the right half of your card. I know I said I wanna use my designer series paper up this year, I just don't wanna use it up too much because of mistakes like that. But 
It's not the end of the world. Okay, now we'll add adhesive to this piece. And I will repeat the process on this side. Okay, so now I've got my designer series paper on the correct side. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this right on top of it. You can, well, do you think I can get this off? Hmm, I can. All right, so maybe I'm not even going to be wasting my designer series paper too much because I can use that on another project. Okay. Ooh, I lucked out on that one. All right, now I'm going to add my adhesive to the back. The reason I did decide to take it off is I think the um, Evening Evergreen is going to show through a whole lot better than that piece of designer series paper through all these holes that are there on the circle. So I've stamped my sentiment in the middle, and then I used that circle die and created the design around my sentiment and yeah it definitely shows up a whole lot better so I'm glad I took the time to take that paper off all right so now my card looks like this and the last thing that I have to do is put my three trees together now one of the things that I did on this card and I'm going to change it up a little bit is I didn't pop this up on dimensionals I think this little tree might look a little bit better if I put it up on dimensionals. So I'm going to go ahead and try that on this card. So the first thing that I did was just add a little bit of adhesive to the bottom of the tallest Christmas tree. Now you don't want to go up too high because the only part that's going to be attached is right down here. So just run a little bit of your tape down there and you can lay it flat, sort of and just attach your tree, okay? And I'm gonna suggest that you close it and really press down there. You wanna make sure that you keep your tree at or just above that score line. Um, I might be just a titch low so that when it folds, it feels like it's still folding okay, but just make sure you kinda of have it up maybe a little bit higher than what's here so it doesn't get caught and bent. All right, and then I'm gonna take my next tree and it's gonna go here. So I can put my adhesive here and then a little bit on the side as well. But again, you don't wanna do a lot or go up too high, but that way I'm attaching it with adhesive here and here on the tree, okay? And I'm just gonna put that tree again kind of towards the bottom, flip it over rub that down and then this is the one I'm going to pop up on dimensionals hopefully um, this card is already going to be thick enough that it's going to cost more if you choose to mail it um, oh nope that'll be fine I was going to put a dimensional here and you don't want to do that because that's going to show through but these are going to be low enough that the other dimensionals aren't going to show Anyhow, this card is already really thick, so I'm not sure that it's one you're necessarily going to mail. You may want to give it directly to people. Um, however, it will be mailable, and if you choose to do that, just be aware that there will be extra postage in order to mail that card. And so now I'm going to pop that one up on dimensionals, and boy, I do like that a whole lot better. It just adds a little bit of depth when the card opens up. Okay, so let me see if you can... I don't know that you can see it so much on camera, but I'll hold these two pieces down and, and maybe it'll it'll show up for you. Um, a little bit more shadow here, perhaps, than on this one. It just gives it a little more um, pop. And in fact, I'm gonna just, I like it so much. I'm gonna risk ruining this card, which I did not. And I'm gonna add a couple dimensionals to this one too and go ahead and pop this up while I'm thinking about it don't be afraid to change midstream yep much better okay and then the last thing that we need to do is finish 
the outside of our card. And so I am using some of the gold ribbon along with this. And you know what? I had a piece cut. And do you think, if that's all I lose tonight, I think I'm doing pretty good given that I was all ready for this last night. And I did find my ribbon. Yay! Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop up my sentiment on dimensionals. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did that on this one too. All right. Whoops. Getting a little crazy there with the dimensionals. And then with my ribbon, what I did is I just took my um, adhesive and I ran a couple strips in the center of my card. And what that allowed me to do is to just put my ribbon down and I'm making my edges a little bit long. I'm curving it, adhering that in the middle and I'm curving it again at the bottom. And then I've got it adhered on um, a couple different spots in there. And then I'm trying to figure out ways I can use ribbon without having to tie everything because bows, some people like them, some people don't. Some people can tie them, some people can't. And then I'm just going to stick my sentiment on top. And, and the reason I did go with very vanilla is I really wanted to use this ribbon. Um, I'll confess, I didn't really realize how white that was. But again, I think we're okay. And then I'm just going to take the scissors I use only for... I shouldn't say only for, but that I use on my ribbon. And I'm just going to snip it at an angle on both these tails. And then our card is done. So there you go. Um, I used about 18 inches of ribbon, in case you're wondering on that. So this is kind of a monotone version, um, really featuring the Evening Evergreen and the gold foil. And I tried a couple different dyes. I'm assuming too that you're probably gonna stick a Christmas note in here as opposed to trying to write your whole letter on here because I didn't leave a lot of room for that, mostly for you to sign names. But I really like how this circle looks and the way the paper pops out behind things. Um, my next thing is gonna be to figure out if I can color these things you could put some of those metallic um, festive pearls on here but that was really going to make this card thick and not mail real well so I did not do that I chose to just stick with the gold foil um, but I will play with that a little bit on some other cards that I make so that is my card for tonight I hope you enjoyed this and appreciate you taking the time to watch me tonight um, if you know anybody who might be interested in this card or this, you know, even if it's just this technique, the folder, the fold, have them watch the video. Make sure that you, you share it with your friends. Um, if you don't already subscribe to my Facebook group, feel free to do that. I'm also sharing all of my videos over on YouTube, so um, that may make it easier for you to find. My YouTube, ch YouTube channel is Carol. Wow, I'm having a hard time talking. My YouTube channel is Carol's Creative Escape um, with Carol Garrison. And like I said, everything gets posted there. And I usually put the date that I did the video as well with that. So here's a view of it in Cherry Cobbler and a view of it in the Evening Evergreen with slightly different looks on the inside of the cards. Um, definitely, I think you're going to want to pop the um, middle tree up just to give a little bit of depth play around with the different dies that are in here. Um, this particular set has several different patterns that'll leave holes. You could kind of make this one look like fa falling snow, I think. And then there's some for the snowflakes. That's a fun little design. Um, these are each separate dies. They are not connected, but you can get a lot of little snowflakes and you'd be able to die cut six of them out at one time as well. And there is just a little ring as well that'll leave a circle of dots around your sentiment it is too small for this sentiment which is why i went with this bigger one but those two rings would look really cute layered together as well so there you go thanks again everybody and i will see you next week have a super week bye, -bye.